Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have Małgorzata Wypich from Diversity Hub's Mental Health Center. Uh, Małgorzata, for those of you who haven't watched the first session with Małgorzata, uh, she's a psychologist, a PhD, a specialist in psychological intervention, 12 years of academic background, nine years in an emergency as a psychological support officer. Hello again, Małgorzata, it's great to see you. Hi. Hi, it's great to see you too. How are you today? Uh, I'm very, um, very good, really. I feel that I, I became a little maniac because of uh, uh, running out of time, and I, my arousal is is uh, up. So I have very good mood and a lot of energy. I don't know how come. Wonderful, because the topic we are going to talk about today is not the easiest of topics. I'm sure you will agree. We will talk about the most difficult of situations that can leads to great many types of mental health crises in companies. Uh, could you give us a couple of examples to begin with? Uh, what type of difficult situations are we talking about in the corporate context? Mm -hmm. First, maybe I will tell you what's the difference between stress and chronic stress and uh, crisis um, in terms of psychological crisis. Because sometimes when we say psychological crisis, uh, people overuse this. And if we talk about stress, is something that we imagine. We create kind of what if, yeah? what if happens to me, what will be the next? And in fact, it, uh, it's not happening at the moment, in present time. Yeah? We just create some kind of scenario that may, may happen to us. And when we talk about crisis, it means that something happened, that we face kind of loss. And those situations that are most tragic, traumatizing, and those situations that happened uh, in our clients' companies, that when, ha when it happens, people can't control it. They, it's kind of beyond possibilities of coping, are connected to uh, having bad news about your mental or uh, somatic health, having bad news about your family member uh, illness, uh, losing a child, uh, losing a close person, uh, a spouse. Uh, also, sometimes there are situations that someone dies in very um, unknown situation. We, we can't see the body or we don't know whether it was natural death or suicide. And we also support our clients in situations like suicide of employee or someone has a grief after suicidal death of a uh, of family member. Also, those situations that uh, companies and teams uh, find difficult are connected with miscarriage, especially if it was a kind of high pregnancy and everyone knew that, that the person, that the lady is pregnant, then they also don't, have, don't know how to deal with it. Please uh, give me a number, the actual number of types of situations you've been dealing with over the last months and years, because what you're talking about is really critical stress management and interventions mm -hmm. from the outside, I would imagine. So how many types of critical situations have you come across, more or less? In fact, what I've about? just described during the last time, uh, last year uh, all of those situations i've mentioned happened uh, in our clients companies all of those situations happened mm -hmm. in fact and uh, the way yes yes in fact what i may say during the last time uh, every week we are doing some kind of crisis response for our clients mm -hmm. and if I understand you correctly, most of these activities are interventions uh, from outside consultancies, experts, stress management experts, are they? Yes, because I just mentioned those situations when company cannot uh, cope by uh, using their own resources. Because even if they have procedures for this kind of situations, uh, the manager and the HR may know the person in crisis and they are also overwhelmed by emotions. So external uh, experts are necessary because we are more emotionally stable in this situation. 
So yes, uh, even if we train companies and even if we equip them with protocols of um, leading uh, the crisis team in this situation, there is a point, ask external er expert for support. Do not take everything uh, uh, on yourself. And the next question, because you're leading me really to this next question, and it's only fair that I should ask you what lawyers call a leading question, uh, and that is, should organizations feel partly responsible for actually coping with a crisis situation like that? And the leading version of this question would, would be, why should organizations feel responsible? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, why they should cope with those situations is that usually, even if it's a crisis of a single employee, it's, uh, um, it touches all the team everyone is involved in emotional way yeah so uh, it becomes a problem to address by manager and the other hand is that if we don't react very fast uh, in this kind of situation people may have prolonged uh, problems and they will go for a sick leave and this is a kind of money loss for for company as well and we know from uh, data it's evidence based that people who got uh, at this very first beginning good uh, social support from family for company they will get better sooner than if they are left without support and there are some research showing that money invested in creating uh, protocols of help uh, and in uh, also in training people how to give psychological first aid uh, it's it's a good invested money. So each dollar that you will invest will lead to even seventeen dollars that you can save if you have this kind of strategies. You use external support and psychological support for for your people. And there is also another reason why we should react. You know, at the end of the day, when we will look back on, at our life and we will sum up our successes and failures. One of those things that we mention usually is that we help somebody. So it's just being human that we react in those situations. And the topic of this conversation of ours is actually about five action steps that companies should undertake, because I would imagine it's also a question of uh, values, core company values, because even if you have an isolated crisis situation, other employees would probably see it as as a situation where solidarity is not only required and called for, but natural as a response, as a response when they see that the company is not responding systemically to uh, an isolated situation like a burnout, even uh, yeah. someone someone unable to cope uh, in the current circumstances is not. We don't have to say that enough has happened in 2020 alone for people to see to feel isolated and fr more fragile in many ways. So what are those five action steps? Yes, uh, what we suggest is maybe I will start from stage two uh, because there is a kind of uh, shock reaction at the beginning. Yeah, The news is coming and um, there are first steps to be taken and the first steps I will describe uh, as the last one. Yeah, So after this very first reaction, is uh, the second stage would be to to create a space for briefing and usually uh, the, the team that should should gather is a manager of the team that is touched by the problem, uh, HRP who is responsible for this team uh, and external experts. So we do a briefing because we check how they responded on the first step, what was uh, what actions were taken, how manager feels himself as well. So we try to uh, not only brief them to recognize the needs, but also to check what's the attitude of uh, of manager because he will be the, the leader in this situation. He will be the one who supports uh, the team as well. And then we also give some tips how to call, uh, how to lead a talk with a person in crisis because sometimes the, the company, the manager or HRBP are going to call the family after loss. So, so sometimes they are so afraid to pick up the phone and just ask the person, what do you need? So during this briefing, we also give some tips how they should uh, call to somebody in crisis and also how to plan the next step, which means the briefing with, with all the team. 
So uh, after calling the, the employee who is in crisis or the family who lost somebody, the next step is briefing with the team. And again, we also learn uh, how this uh, briefing and passing bad news to the team should uh, should go on, what, uh, what uh, words they should uh, use, how you should use the pauses during you pass bad message. So it's also a kind of procedure. And also what you should say, uh, say to the team in terms of uh, concentrating on work or giving uh, the team space to cry out some emotions. And sometimes during this briefing with the team, there's already an expert, a psychologist who gives them so uh, some information how to cope in certain stress. And the, the, the fifth stage of this, um, this action is long-term support. During this uh, briefing with the team, psychologists are able to recognize who is coping in a good way and they will cope themselves or using their own uh, social support network and how many people will need additional psychological support. So we offer uh, long-term support for, for people in, in certain situations. And uh, so this is briefing with manager and IHR, uh, calling the family of the employee who, for example, died or just calling the person in crisis, gathering information, what he or she needs, then the briefing with the team, then long term support. And the very first stage in this process is psychological first aid that uh, that requires some competences from people who are first responders. So someone who is the, the witness of the situation. Yeah? There are many situations in our clients' uh, companies when someone, for example, has a heart attack or there's an accident uh, in the company and someone reacts, someone rescues the person. So those are people who may be in trauma, but also someone got the message. Uh, yeah, so he needs to approach the person, stabilize them in an emotional way, recognize the very urgent needs, just this emergency needs. And this behavior required some skills that I named psychological first aid. So at the very beginning, in fact, what we offer is to train managers to be prepared for this very first message that they pick up the phone and someone says, my mother died or I have a tumor. So this is the first stage of this protocol that we prepare for our clients. You mentioned a number of times, in fact, the, how important it is to handle the first reaction right, which is really very much like the first impression in different types of situations where it, where it matters, because this is, uh, this is a yes or no situation uh, from at least employees' perspective, when they think, does the company really care about me, or does it just say so in writing, in, in you know, corporate bulletins and company slogans? It's a classic situation where, based on the quality of this response from middle and top management, you see uh, how relatable your company is. So my question is, how can you prepare management for, for the proper type of first reaction? Mm. So first, what I want to say is most of the, those managers that I trained, they want to react in proper way. They want to be a good manager who is a good carer and doesn't harm employee by saying something like grip yourself together or uh, it's your private business. Most of them don't want to react in this way. They want to know what can I do in a best way to support the person to be a good carer, to be good manager. So they do care about it. And the second thing is that they want to react in a certain way, in a good way, but they don't know how. Even those first words, what, what can I say to a parent who lost his child? Yeah, they are so uh, afraid of committing mistake. So in fact, how we can prepare them is to show them that they are certain words, that there are some uh, sentences that if you say them, you will not commit mistake, that it will sound supportive to the employee if you use those words yeah if you if you say to somebody i understand that the life of your and health of your child is now priority to you so uh, i understand that you will concentrate all your attention and energy to help your child don't worry about the job we will you know manage with your projects 
So even saying this sentence is very supportive. So we teach, uh, we train uh, managers to, to be prepared to use those uh, sentences. And in fact, what happens if they know what to say from the very beginning, they hear their voice, okay, I just said something and it sounds smart. They have uh, lowered anxiety, yeah? so they feel that they control situation. So on the one hand, those situations are very rare, but they leave a very strong, uh, you know, memory. Uh, they are memorized as hard situations. And if you knew how to behave, you can, you know, get out from the situation without guilt, without overthinking that maybe I should have done something more. So we can prepare managers, even if it happens uh, rarely, we can prepare them how they should behave and they think, okay, I will have control in this situation. Margareta, the last question I've just thought of asking you might come as, come as the toughest one, really. You're talking about situations here that come as a shock, largely difficult to predict or unpredictable, because when we talk about a heart attack, it's really difficult to predict an incident, a situation like that. But in some instances, which are more prolonged, uh, and it, they actually require a certain acceleration process to happen, like, for instance, a situation where you're de dealing with a suicide, where you're de dealing with mental problems that accumulate over time and get different types of stimuli on the way. So my question is, how skilled are managers, supervisors, who themselves work under a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure for performance, for KPIs, for benchmarks, for all those procedures that they have to meet on the way. How skilled are they at detecting trouble early enough, at detecting sy symptoms of psychological trauma that eventually may result in really uh, difficult type of uh, situation. Mm -hmm. You know, usually when trauma happens, so there's uh, really critical incidents, employees say about it, yeah, so it will not be a secret that something really bad happened to them. But if we talk about prolonged chronic stress or the situation that accumulates yeah, due to the depression, for example, or when someone has complicated grieving or someone just can't handle this overwhelming situation. So I may say that um, what I've spotted among participants of my training, managers are good at recognizing that someone is not uh, doing well. But the problem is that they don't always know how they should react because they still uh, feel some obstacles and they have some attitudes that stop them from asking. So what we do also, we really encourage people, if you've noticed something, if you wonder, if you have a dilemma, if you overthink about the behavior of, of your employee because this behavior has changed and you have some worries, go and ask. Yeah? And also we explain what it's uh, so worthy to ask employees about why they behave this way and to to just clear the situation, to, to understand whether there is a big problem. Because sometimes people get addicted to, to gaming and they don't sleep, and this is the problem. But sometimes what they show, those symptoms, may really mean something tragic behind. Yeah? So we just learn uh, managers to be more brave in asking straight questions. I just saw the figures this morning, you mentioned online gaming, I just saw the figures this morning saying that over 13 million Poles are playing online games these days, which the pandemic situation may have even increased significantly uh, as, a result, as a reaction to, to you know, isolation and people looking for different ways of relief in the current circumstances. Uh, Maugusata, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you even though the topic we've discussed is really, really uh, difficult. Thank you for finding the time.